90% of capture fishers in the world work in small-scale fisheries. Many more work in the processing, trade and allied sectors. Together, they contribute to over 50% of fish catch in developing countries. Despite this contribution to global food security and livelihoods, small-scale fishing communities are often the poorest and most marginalized. In 2014, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations endorsed a set of guidelines and outlined a series of core objectives to protect and enhance the impact of small-scale fisheries around the world. One of these objectives is the social and economic development of small-scale fishing communities so they can enjoy their human rights. This includes their right to an adequate standard of living and work, ensuring that their health, education and other essential needs are met. In many developing countries, fisheries are unregulated and workers must endure long hours, poor safety and exploitation. Often, fishers and fish workers have no access to social protection or insurance. At the same time, violence, child labour and sexual abuse are common in the industry. Fish workers are often unorganised and their roles in the global economy go unrecognised. The participation of small-scale fishing communities in decision-making is key to their development and that's where the SSF guidelines come in. They recommend that states invest in the human development of these communities, including housing, water and sanitation, healthcare and education. Children should have access to affordable education so they can acquire the skills and employment of their choice. Decent and gainful work should be promoted for formal and informal workers all along the fisheries value chain. This includes migrant workers who play an important role in fisheries globally. States should cooperate to address the causes of migration and its implications for the sustainability of the sector. The guidelines advocate for the eradication of forced labour, violence and debt bondage with special care that the needs of women and other vulnerable groups are addressed. To do so, states should integrate occupational health and safety into the management of fisheries. This includes writing appropriate safety laws, collecting data on accidents, raising awareness and ensuring compliance with safety regulation. National regulations should be consistent with international human rights standards and guidelines of the United Nations. Social security and access to credit and insurance schemes are also important to tide over the risks faced by small-scale fishing communities. Recognizing their contribution to local and global economies, the states should ensure that these fish workers benefit from new development like tourism and small-scale aquaculture. On the whole, the guidelines bring states and small-scale fishing communities together to ensure decent work and an adequate standard of living for these communities. By protecting and furthering the rights of these communities, the guidelines help preserve their cultures and ways of life.